Hello, welcome to the second season of the Decompression Chamber. I'm your host, Mario. It's a great pleasure to have you. And um, yeah, our opening quote is going to be from Socrates, the, uh, that old Greek guy. The quote goes, A life not examined is not a life worth living. I'm paraphrasing, so it's not exactly a quote, but you get it. Roll the intro. Uh, yeah. One of the meat and my steamer is broke. Put the bleach and peak at the soul. Peace never know what's about to occur, but my zen getting rolled at the turn of your words. One of the meat and my steamer is broke. Put the bleach and peak at the soul. Peace never know what's about to so yeah, this this second video is going to be hopefully similar in terms of format, but um, it's I'm in a completely different place now, not just geographically, but mentally, um, from where I was in the previous video. Um, from where I filmed last, I think the most recent bit that I filmed was with Harvey, um, and that was ages ago, when I went to visit him in Bath. Um, but it was a great time, but truthfully so much has happened since, I mean... I'm even struggling to think where to start, so hopefully if I just kind of show you a clip reel of what's been happening, I've I've taken lots of clips of what's been going on, I just, I haven't really been in a decompression chamber kind of mindset. So yeah, go look at those. Such a funny... <laughs> I think not using colour to your advantage yeah. would be a mistake. Secure that place. Um, but now, nah, truthfully, I have had the opportunity to to do decompression chamber. I've just, I've just been trying to live life and experience it and enjoy it because I think if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't have anything to hear to speak about. And um, here I am having experienced a lot and and somehow struggling to speak. <laughs> it's it's a practice thing, really. I haven't done this for a hot sec, but um. Yeah, so really what I'm going to talk about is how the fuck I got here to Spain. Because originally it was supposed to be a simple simple story. I uh, I book my PCR test, I get on a flight with my, with my family, I arrive in Spain, cool beans, I'm there. But um, as I went on my own to the airport to do a PCR test, I look at my passport and I go, that's weird, it looks like I'm past the expiry date. And um, it wasn't pleasant, but I rushed through all five stages of grief and hit acceptance pretty quick. And... Um, what that meant really is that I was delayed in going to Spain. I had to, in the last couple of days, I've gone up to Durham on an overnight bus, got my passport to the train down to Stansted, got the plane to Spain and then got picked up by my family. And that was just the past 48 hours. And um, it was strange, really. Um, it was lonely. I spent a lot of time alone just kind of looking around, seeing around and... It wasn't lonely because I was alone. I think it was lonely because I just wanted to be with my family. I knew that was where I was headed. But, you know, I'm here now. And, well, the reason why I wanted to come up here is because I've often heard the term, the phrase, on top of the world. And I don't know about the world, but I'm definitely on top of my world right now. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been able to see my family, my Spanish family here since a year ago. I wasn't able to visit them in... Uh, during Christmas for the first time ever which was a bit tough but seeing them today this morning it's literally indescribable it's literally indescribable I can I can picture the moment in my head I could describe it to you the moment but the feelings and the emotions and the satisfaction it's unparalleled it's unparalleled you know oftentimes I've literally just as I was walking around here on my own I've I've romanticized the idea of of just cutting away just being in a completely different space and and living a solitary lifestyle where you just kind of are more grounded and, and more in touch with your surroundings and nature. And, and in reality, as much as I like the, the eventfulness of living in a city, as much as I like the, the different ex experiences, the truth is what really grounds me is the people, is the relationships. And more than anything, family. And I think when I when I say family in that sense, I don't just mean family that you're related to. I think family is that sense of belonging, that sense of support and unconditional love and appreciation that that isn't just provided to you by people in your family or that you're blood related to. But um, I'm lucky enough that the people who do that the most are my family, my my blood family. But yeah, this this uh mount this you know scape that you're looking at Asturias, just over there, way over there is the sea, and and just along the coast is is a collection of places and beaches and and little spots that really contain such a huge amount of the best experiences of my life. 
You know, every every summer I've been lucky enough to be in Spain for a big chunk of August. Normally the most of August. And I've taken it for granted, really. It's not like I haven't appreciated it or really been happy during those times. I just, I don't really think I sat down and thought about how lucky I've been. The truth is, is that my parents sacrifice as much as possible to maximize these kind of experiences for us this is this me being here is like my parents life work not just me but like not not life's work in terms of like they have careers and they have done a huge amount of like influential work with children as teachers but i mean this they sacrifice so much for this for me being here for them being here and that feeling of togetherness you just got to appreciate it. You just got to appreciate it. I mean, the, my YouTube channel is called More or Less Grateful. And, and right now I'm sat right at more. I got so much gratitude. You know, the whole the whole time that I was, you know, spent in Bristol while my family was in Spain, I was just thinking to myself, you're just lucky enough to be going. Like, you're just lucky enough to... I'm. If I had to go home today, just, to be, just having seen my family today and spend time with them would be enough for me. But... I'm lucky that I'm here for a bit of a stretch. So, who knows? Maybe you'll see more clips in this episode from Spain. I filmed one from England. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what this is going to be, but truthfully, I'm just... I'm so happy that I'm here. And, you know, something that I was thinking about um, kind of when I was walking around picking a spot to film at is is how I can how I can build off these experiences, you know? I feel like it would be wrong of me to not properly learn my lesson and and really consider how lucky I am to be here. And obviously, I've just kind of been a bit repetitive about that, but I'm still drinking it in, I'm still processing it. Because as I was coming over here with, like, the the passport thing and the PCR test and the the forms that you have to fill in, I guess in the back of my head, I had this slight fear like I wasn't going to be here. And... um, and now that I'm here, I'm just, I'm trying to soak it in. I'm trying to drink it in. But yeah, Asturias, Asturias is bloody amazing. you got rainy mountains, you got sunny beaches, you got everything you could want in this life. And it's been a dream of mine to, to get friends from back home to come and visit here because I feel like one of, one of the most beneficial parts of being bilingual for me personally is, um, is, is being able to see those two worlds, being able to be here and, and get in touch with the culture and go to small little villages and see like how they carry a tree through and, and mount it in their main field or or just like going to a, a seaside town and, and having their their paella or whatever it's just just being able to see that and then comparing that to my experience back home and and kind of using all of those experiences to formulate like the worldview that I had I think I think I it's something that is extreme, extremely beneficial, and, and I guess it would it would be very interesting for me to have that sense of familiarity of of those friends, but in a place where I particularly I feel so nostalgic for it, you know, because there are stories about us as kids. The beach that I went to today, a bit over actually it might be that way. Um, there's a story of me when I was a very very little toddler where I'd be on the um, on the sand, not very near the water, and I'd sit. And I'd wriggle on my bum, naked all the way to the water line. You know, I must have been less than two years old. And it, my uncle Valentini called me Oruhi thing, uh, which means little thing that wriggles. And um, and yeah, it's it's strange to be in a place where so many of my experiences have been here. You know, I, it's not just a nice beach. It's a nice beach where I've had summer after summer of of nice experiences. And I don't, oftentimes I. I look at how how quickly it feels like I'm aging recently and, and it makes me feel sad. But now I'm just like I'm I'm just glad for what it's been. I'm I'm trying to just trying to just focus on the moment really. I think a lot of time I'm not in the moment. A lot of the time I'm thinking about something else or I'm worrying about something in the future. Or maybe even I'm just too focused on what I want to say rather than what what needs to be heard or what needs to be said. And so, what I'm going to try to do over these next few days that I'm in Spain, um, I think it's 10 days or something, I'm just going to try and drink in every experience. I'm going to appreciate everything for what it is, share share my love for the experience and for those around me, and and hope that I can contribute to that happiness and that belonging. Because, you know, I can feel it from them just because 
I wasn't there and the rest of the family was, I can they, I can feel it from their response, from their reaction, me being here, that it is more right when it's all of us together. But yeah, how much time have I got? Mm, ten minutes, not too bad. But yeah, I wish I could think of something else, but truthfully, I'm I'm pretty happy with how this has gone. So hopefully, you enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, hopefully that should be the sound checks all sorted out. I can sync this up later. But, um, yeah, here I am, filming another segment for this goddamn podcast. And, um, yeah, truthfully, I was very happy with how the first episode went. Um, so, here I am, hopefully making another segment. But, yeah, I, um, I was unsure how I wanted to do this because, strictly speaking, I was told in film studies that, well, not film studies, in my production course, that you want the sun to, uh, be backlighting stuff. So, here I am, backlighting stuff. But, um,. Yeah, so I'm just making sure that my recording's recording okay because I kind of get worried about it sometimes. But yeah, the bit that I wanted to talk about here um, on this segment would be friendship. You know, it's um, something I've thought about a while, really. Um, I guess it's just kind of like one of those constants in your life, if you're lucky. Um, I'm someone who, you know, has had many different friends from different um, backgrounds and circumstances and stuff, but I think something that runs consistently without all of them is uh, is that feeling of like you know obviously amicability but also just like support and acceptance you know um, I think without that feeling of like togetherness and belonging that friendship can bring you know you're you're missing out in some way or another um, I think there's there's something quite pure about friendship it's like because with family of course like if you're lucky enough they'll support you unconditionally and they will be a constant in your life for as long as you live but kind of family are assigned to you more than they are picked you know unless unless you adopt a child is you don't really there's not much choice in the matter you just kind of are and the family that you exist in you have to handle and some people they get a good hand some people they don't and um it's the same way with friends really i guess but except from the fact that you you aren't assigned friends you just you make friends it kind of the the relationship just develops from wherever it starts to wherever it ends and and it is a very unique thing i think the way that you are around your friends is naturally going to be different to the way you're around your family and i think because it allows you that different dimension of of expression that different environment to be it can help like shape different parts of you you know i mean it goes without saying for example that uh when you're at a friend's house, <laughs> you're nicer to the parents than sometimes you ordinarily would be to your own. But um, that's just the way it is, really. Um, but yeah, so I've just been thinking a lot about friendships. And since I've been back from uni, I think a lot about um, the differences between the people, the friends I made in Bristol and the friends I made at uni, you know. Um, there were some friends that I made where we just kind of made friends from being in similar circumstances. You just, you grow up in the same place, you go to the same school, and naturally, when you come together, it's, you see, you see eye to eye, because, um, because you have those same circumstances, because you have the same, similar perspective. I think, um, you know, when, when I went to university, uh, there's completely, like, a much more diverse, different kind of types of people, and I don't know, types of people is a, is a broad way to describe it, but I just mean in that, naturally, I think, growing up in Bristol, I, I just kind of, I clung to the people who, who I identify with, who kind of, I felt similar to, you know, um, I think I find that a lot of the people who I get along with better, um, a lot of lines run parallel, you know, between us, because to a certain extent, that's how it's got to be, but, um, but yeah, and also I think to a certain extent, in each and every friendship I have, there are always multiple qualities in that person that I admire a lot, you know, and, I think there's something in us that that wants us to be like by interacting together we always kind of tend to be more like each other you know so I wonder whether part of us in within part of that idea of friendship is maybe the fact that there is a quality in this person that we admire and, and we subconsciously think that by being around them we'll, we'll have that we'll be able to develop that quality and, and maybe share it with them and uh, yeah I don't know that's something I think about as well so I mean, oftentimes I'm w when I'm angry at a friend, or like not angry, but you know, when I'm in dispute or or I feel resentment towards them, I I think to myself, what are qualities that this person has that I don't? How can I 
improve myself and be more like this person at the same time and and you know how does that relate to our conflict because everybody has shortcomings everybody has failures you know I spoke about in the last thing is about forgiveness is it's not about the mistakes necessarily it's about the progression of mistakes and and whether you you make any movement towards any ideas of learning but um but yeah truthfully I feel very grateful for the friendships I have in my life I feel like all the people who I'm lucky enough to know treat me with dignity and respect and kindness and and are supportive and and I, I can give so many words for but but really they're not as valuable as, as the thing itself you know and um, and I don't know it's kind of like friendships are a weird, a weird thing as well because sometimes they're necessarily they're kind of like amorphous and unlabeled you know you could be friends with someone who you've known for a week and you're using the same label to describe someone you, you could know your entire life and sometimes in some situations you might actually know that person sometimes you can know someone more in a week than you've known someone else their entire life just kind of depends on how much they're willing to open up you know you can't really share any quality of your life with someone unless you know you open yourself up to it unless you there has to be some kind of vulnerability and um I think unless unless you have that kind of recognition of where each other's vulnerabilities are and, and support for one and e each other, then then you just got to do better. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know whether this came out anymore. That's going to be the end of the segment. See you later. Little boy for all my jaw stop and duck knock and rust up and for cigarettes. Yeah. Inner says smoke, Alice says no. Cloud of the road that I play so I know by their intimate business and building. Yeah, you still never like remember. Describe the door for something to hold. It isn't the sheets that I folded this morning while sleeping the cold. I'ma turn up this girth, turn up my words, turn up her hustles as grumpy as birth. Billy the kid, I'ma cuss on the earth. I will be gold with horns in the fur.